Uh, hi, everyone. It is with great delight that uh, I am hosting today Batuhan Fayek Dedin Bai, who is a graduate student from Istanbul Technical University, the Faculty of Computer and Informatics Engineering. And uh, Batuhan this year, he literally aced it as he ranked first uh, this year. So congratulations, Batuhan, on this great achievement. So let me tell you guys a little bit about uh, Batuhan. So he actually transferred from the computer engineering department at Yildiz University, Technical University in 2018, and he ranked third. He received his uh, honored bachelor's degree from the computer engineering at Istanbul Technical University this year, 2021. And as I mentioned earlier, he uh, ranked first. And the great news that he got admitted to the computer science master uh, program at uh, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, which is EPFL. Now, uh, Batuhan, he has a wide uh, spectrum of uh, research uh, interests and related particularly to artificial intelligence uh, in industry. And I'm going to just showcase a few projects he worked on. So you can see he worked on a, on a project for a universal barcode detection in real time, as well as COVID-19 diagnosis using chest x-rays. So he has a hunger for AI projects. And here you can see uh, several projects he's worked on, including hair root segmentation, parathyroid gland localization, storehouse object classification, deep learning on mobile edge devices, mobile minimization and quantization, and from research to production. And this is uh, really stunning. So congratulations on these uh, great projects and also on your uh, first rank. So uh, this is Issam Rekik interviewing Avatuhan today. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at Istanbul Technical University. And he's actually uh, one of my very best students. Uh, you took my, um, learning, uh, my learning from data course. So thank you for joining us today. It's a great pleasure to have you. So how are you doing, Avatuhan? Uh, thank you, Sam teacher. Uh, I'm doing very fine. Uh, thank you for the great um, welcoming. It's, great. it's an honor to be here, actually, with you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I, have a, I have a few questions for you today. So we're going to just flow uh, naturally. So the first question, uh, tell me about your three-year journey at Istanbul Technical University. How was it? How can you describe it? Um, well, my three-year journey actually um, started from uh, when I transferred from Yildiz. Um, the very first month I start, I transferred from Yildiz, I started uh, working with uh, Professor Dr. Gözdenal uh, in the computer vision laboratory. Um, besides that, uh, I wanted to do Erasmus and exchange programs. Um, therefore, I kept my GPA high. Um, but due to the coronavirus pandemic, I, uh, I couldn't get to fly anywhere. So uh, I decided to finish my last year at the very last second. And uh, since my GPA was high, and as some teacher said, I aced my last year, I ranked first. It was actually <laughs> a surprise to me as well. <laughs> so you're being very humble. You're saying my GPA is fine. So what is your GPA? Um, I graduated with 3.83 out of 4. Um, excellent. That is excellent. Okay, so, you know, like, uh, usually when you start a uni you, you, in the first year, like, there is a big leap or a big change, you know, for, for, for a mm -hmm. student or a learner. So, uh, when you just got, you know, like, started and joined ITU, tell us about what did you like most? What got you into choosing this uh, university uh, first? And then what did you like most about the, your journey or your uh, experience here as a student? Well, um, the reason I chose it was uh, because of its great teacher lineup and because of its outstanding um, research output. Uh, I actually 
like doing research and um, I like working on artificial intelligence projects. Uh, as I've checked the lineup on the ITU, I've seen great teachers like uh, Islam teacher or Gözde teacher and many, many others. So I've decided to um, make my transfer to ITU. Uh, actually, to do your uh, transfer, you need to keep your GPA high on your first year as well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I kept my GPA high in Yildiz Technik too. And I transfer here because of its great research output. It's one of the best uh, universities I can attend in Turkey. And Wonderful. It was, it was actually my very first choice uh, and my only choice. So I got to come here. Um, and, and what did you like most? Your, so, so things yeah. you like about ITU, like in maybe unique things. Like personally, for example, I do love the camp. <laughs> We have a beautiful green campus. And uh, so this is one of the things that I really liked about this university. You can go for long walks uh, in the morning or after work. And there are lots of other things. So tell me about yourself. What did you like most about, you know, this university or being a student here? Well, uh, what I liked about most is that E2 has um, a lot of um, good, how can I say, um, you can do a lot of different things. You know, uh, you can you can be an entrepreneur, uh, which is uh, what I like. Uh, what I like being, and you can go to um, what is called the Technocant, um, and you can you can do your entre uh, entrepreneurship. You can uh, get into uh, many companies and meet with their higher ranking officers, or you can do research. Or uh, just like uh, some teachers said, uh, we have many uh, great campuses. And they, besides the campuses, mostly uh, the ETU's relationship with the uh, industry and the research, the, being that connection line in between actually uh, made me choose ETU at, its, uh, at the first place. Uh, that's, that's mostly it, actually. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. So basically, uh, this is also one important thing that you mentioned that it's not just uh, here as an engineer uh, student, you have many options and these options range from research to industry, entrepreneurship, startup, we have a big incubation center here. So yes. um, you, you get a diverse uh, training and you get a lot of, of uh, you know, possibilities, right? To explore your future uh, career and get to choose what you want. But to get to that, now the options are there, but not everyone makes it, okay? Like, you know, uh, I would say not everyone makes it in a brilliant way. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more and share with our viewers and, uh, you know, like new students who will be joining um, ITU this year. What is uh, the secret, you know, uh, to your success? What are your key habits? Maybe you have like some, uh, you know, like, how do I say, like a daily ritual or a daily, uh, uh, you know, like few things that you're doing here and there that made you successful. What made you successful compared maybe uh, to other students and to your peers? Um, if I have to conclude everything in one word, I would say discipline. Discipline. Uh, I totally yeah. agree, man. Discipline is the very first um, step that you have to take for success. Um, as a great entrepreneur said, um, mm -hmm. winners never quit. And in order not to quit, you have to be really disciplined. Uh, you have to go through, uh, go through all the pain and all the trouble uh, that, that you want to succeed in. And eventually you will get there. For me, um, I wanted to, as I said, I wanted to be a, a great student and I wanted to become a, um, how can I say? I wanted to do uh, exchange programs, as mentioned earlier. Uh, I wanted to be an international student. Therefore, I've studied hard. Uh, I'm not like the people that say, no, I don't study, but I ace stuff. No, I studied hard. I studied really hard. Um, right. And that's, that got me through this 
uh, these success stories. Awesome. Definitely. I totally agree with you. But um, as you know, like um, as a teacher myself, I think students, uh, they're all like, you know, everyone has the capacity to succeed, right? Everyone yes. has the capacity to nail it, to get there, to achieve what they want. But I think the most, um, the biggest barrier to that is self-discipline. How do you keep yourself on track? You know, like how do you, um, mm -hmm. you know, develop your, uh, your, your discipline? So maybe you can tell us a little bit. I know this is a deeper, so we're going deeper and deeper, right? So how do you keep yourself disciplined? You know, like sometimes how do you not let go? What keeps you going, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you tell me about self-discipline. It's an, it's an easy word to throw, but then there's a lot exactly. of things going on behind the scenes, things that made you want to be self-disciplined and to pursue your goals. So why you are self-disciplined? What kept you going? Well, um, I like, uh, I always loved learning and I always loved uh, teaching myself new stuff. Uh, I like I like improving. A person has to improve themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a very organized person. So um, I, I keep my stuff organized, like my agenda and uh, the things I should do. Uh, I always have a calendar. I always have uh, time slots for things that I should do and I should be doing that time period. So uh, being organized actually uh, led me to, to a greater success. And to complement that, I have read many. Um, self-improvement books, you know, um, like many entrepreneurship books and uh, many business books, uh, which, which, which is my interest. Uh, right. I, I have written my um, aims, my, um, the things I would like to, you know, succeed in to a whiteboard uh, right in front of my bed. And every time when I wake up, I see that I will succeed in this and, uh, therefore, I have to keep going, and I just kept going. I, I, I cannot. I sh I know that I should not go out of my schedule because once I do, I know that uh, as a human, I will be lacking. I, I will slack. I know. Yeah. That. So, uh, to come to go over that urge, uh, I have. I had to always be, you know, uh, obey my own rules. Absolutely so, amazing. Mm -hmm. Set those rules, uh, books and other, you know, mostly books and internet helped me. Internet, wonderful. So I can derive two rules here. The first rule, you mentioned the word, the word love. So you said, I love learning. I love expanding myself. So the rule to being self-disciplined from your experience, number one is to have this passion. Okay, why yes. you are doing this, why you are pursuing this, right? The second thing is getting inspired from leaders and people who made it. What made them successful? So you learned from books, okay? And you learned, as you said, maybe YouTube videos, you watch people who are inspiring internationally. And then, you know, we read books on how to get self-discipline, how to, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, sketch your vision. So I would say, I would add a third one, right? So like love, people whom you aspire to learn from, inspirational figures. And the third mm -hmm. one, is basically you are um, you are uh, getting you know like how do I say you, you you're writing your goals you're having a yeah. vision okay so you know yes. where you want to go even if it's not too clear yet because you're just you know you, you've just literally started your journey you still have you know you keep a book of of you know or or, or journal a diary where you're writing your goals and you're scheduling your time and you're planning your day, et cetera. So definitely, and like um, recently I started writing a book, my personal book. I don't know if I'm gonna publish it one day or not. And it's called Know Your Why. So the first thing you need to start with, why? Why am I here? Why am I studying this, right? Where I want to go from here. So if you know your why, you will never lose uh, track or, you know, like you're never, 
basically get lost along the way. So you need to cling to your why. And it's important to write the list, why I'm doing this and where do I want to go? What are your aims? What are your goals, uh, et cetera? Okay, cool. This is all uh, wonderful. Now, this takes, us, takes me to another question. So you, you talked about planning your day. So are you a night owl or an early bird? Batuhan. Um, okay, <laughs> that's actually a great question. <laughs> Uh, when I'm not uh, too overstressed or when I don't have a, a very, very busy schedule, I'm an early bird. I actually wake up around uh, 6.30 or 7. Um, I live actually far from school. So on the school days, I have to even wake up at 5.30. I know that's it's, it's, it's being thrown in every entrepreneurship video. I wake up at 4 a.m. No, I actually have to wake up at 5.30 to get to the 9.30 class. So, uh, so I wake up early, I'm an early bird, but uh, when the classes or the courses, homeworks or whatever I do is overwhelming, um, I, I see myself uh, being a night owl uh, but this doesn't mean that I don't wake up early. It just shortens my <laughs> sleep cycle. Okay. Uh, I try to sleep around seven hours, but uh, when I have a lot of coursework, etc., I go to bed at three or four and then wake up at six. So usually two to three hours sleep is just fine with me with uh, power naps in between in the day during the day. There are some techniques, sleep techniques, which you can practice to, mm -hmm. um, you know, to get the best out of your uh, day, mm -hmm. which is quite necessary to work. Uh, when I sit down to work, I uh, usually don't get out of a library or the place I'm working in uh, for about 14 hours. This doesn't mean that I, I work straight 14 hours, but uh, this means that I gen I make use of most of my day in a library working or studying. Amazing. So I have one question. So you said you make you, you make up most uh, you make up you know out of out most of your day. How how do you, how do you do that? How do you avoid distractions? How do you avoid social media? How do you avoid you know like in my time things were a lot easier. Like you know go to the library, you grab a few books, and then you sit and study. <laughs> Now it's like you have a mobile phone, you need to resist, you know, the urge to check your, if you have Instagram or you have Facebook or Twitter, or whatever you're using there, you know, like WhatsApp is very commonly used mm -hmm. here. So how do you resist that urge? How do you control yourself and how do you, you know, avoid distractions that will, I call them the vampires because they suck your time yes. out, you know, yes. like, so basically, uh, how do you avoid those? How do you avoid them? Well, um, to start with, I I had an, I don't know if we should call it an addiction, but I really loved playing games. Uh, uh -huh. but so you do have another I've, addiction. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, but I, a few years ago, like around uh, four to five years ago, I've seen myself uh, sitting down on the computer for 12 hours straight with no breaks. You know, wow. uh, and okay. that 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 really killed my time. I've seen that uh, I have become someone that I don't want to. So uh, I have quit playing games or games that take that much time. Uh, to start with that, I uninstalled them. I directly deleted all of my accounts, all of my uh, game libraries, etc. Similarly, for the uh, social media, uh, I only use uh, Instagram. Uh, in order to catch up with my uh, friends internationally, I don't post. Uh, I don't. I don't try to, you know, daily update. Yeah, being uh, active. Only, you're not that active. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I only uh, contact with my international friends on Instagram. Uh, I I have recently opened the Twitter just for academic pur purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? I don't use Facebook. I don't know uh, TikTok, Snapchat, etc. I don't have them. Um, similarly, for the WhatsApp, um, I don't, I don't uh, try to communicate anything else but the uh, things I'm studying in. For example, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm doing a project with my group, uh, I keep my WhatsApp tab open on my computer. 
And that is it. That is the only chat I'm looking at uh, for that day. Anything else from my friends, I just ignore. Uh, I, I ar archive them and then mm -hmm. I check them later. Mm -hmm. um, similar things like that. I have a Zen mode uh, on my phone and you have, you have similar applications like Forest that uh, keeps you away from touching your phone. Uh, the Zen mode I have literally locks your phone for the period of uh, time you set. I don't need it, uh, but if I see myself distracted with my phone, I immediately open that. So, uh, small stuff like this. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, I was thinking, having you know, taking the uh, making the decision to delete or uh you know like uh, delete all the games you have installed that is a very bold decision to make and i really i applaud you for that because i know like when you are addicted and you want like when your brain gets used to something switching habits is really uh is really hard so what you need to do like you know um you know you took that firm decision and you turned it off and said okay i'm gonna focus on my studies I want to achieve this. I want, you know, eyes on the goal, as we said. So uh, I think that is uh, that is a very bold and like, you know, brave decision to make uh, because all of us have different kinds of addictions, you know? So getting yourself into discipline and into, you know, a working on something you strive to achieve that is, that is uh, um, admirable. Now, uh, so you talked about all these things. So what? So this is I would consider one of the challenges you have faced, right? Like you love uh, game playing. Now, can you tell me mm -hmm. more about these three years? What are the most difficult moments that you have faced personally? You know, like maybe mentally, maybe you know, like uh, you know, course wise. Uh, how did you? What are the challenges you have faced, and how did you overcome them? How did you, you know, like solve those issues, for example? So maybe you can give us a few examples here and there, just for students to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the viewers also to learn from your experience, because all of us face challenges at different times. And I know that the last, uh, you know, two years due to COVID-19 have been so challenging for many of us uh, at different levels yes. and in varying ways. So maybe you can tell us more about the challenges and how you solve them. All right. Uh, well, the first one that comes to your mind when you are in a university are the courses that you actually don't like. You think that uh, they are not important. Uh, most of the computer engineers go like, hey, this is a hardware course. I'm not going to make use of this. No, you're going to make use of that. You need that knowledge. That's why it's in your course. Uh, and I was thinking uh, like that uh, at the very beginning. Um, mm -hmm. But I know uh, deep, deep in somewhere that people fail those classes because they think uh, they are not needed or uh, they are very hard. So. To, uh, to overcome very hard courses, uh, I made myself that I will study this. For example, there is a, a very hard course, uh, which is given by the electrical uh, engineering uh, department. Mm -hmm. And uh, most, of, most of the computer engineering students uh, don't do well in that course. And mm -hmm. that's that's the uh, the reason that they don't do is because our uh, electrical engineering uh, we we don't like studying electrical engineering. Yeah, so we're but, computer uh, scientists. We're more into the soft yes. side, right? Software development. When it becomes hard, like I would say, like electronics. So okay, yeah. what's the point, right? It, it's like, it's not because the course is hard. You know, yeah, yeah. it's because like, the computer scientists don't. Uh, we don't have usually the background. Yeah, yeah, like the background. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I sat down and literally uh, solved all the examples uh, in the course book. It's, uh, the course book is called Cedra Smith. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have literally sat down and read all, all of the books, uh, all, all of the book, and I have completed all the examples. I have uh, started to teach my peers uh, the 
past exams and uh, previous uh, quizzes just so I would learn better, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so that you learn better. Definitely, this is a very good thing you mentioned. They said, if you want to master a topic, make yourself teach it to someone else, you know, in, in, exactly. in, a, clear, in, a, in a clear and simple way. Awesome. So uh, you, you were talking, okay, about these courses, the, the challenge. So this is one, and do you, do you recall another challenge aside from the hard courses that you don't have mm -hmm. uh, basically a prior knowledge about, like deep knowledge about? Um, something else is that uh, this will probably be very useful to all the newcomers. Mm -hmm. uh, since I was a transfer student, um, I was at the very last of the uh, dormitory placement. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a very hard challenge that I had to come by. Uh, I mentioned earlier that my ride from home takes about two hours to two to three hours, depends on the traffic. And uh, I have asked for a stay in dormitories for about a year. I about a year and a half actually. I came <laughs> from home and got uh, and went back. I spent around five hours uh, in wow, public transit. for commuting, yeah. wow. Hmm. Yes, and uh, this was a very hard challenge that I had to uh, take over. In the end, uh, I did. Uh, there is a thing called a faculty uh, scholarship mm -hmm. for dormitories. Uh, if you are a very a brilliant student that is in need of a dormitory, uh, you, you might want to check that out. Mm -hmm. uh, Good. Good, good to so, know these things. Yeah, so challenges. So yeah. like, you know, there's always a way of trying to solve them. And I think, you know, different students, they have different uh, kinds of challenges. So now you mentioned something about teaching, you know, like teaching as students. Uh, so reading a lot of books first to master the course, this hard course. So tell me about mm -hmm. your learning strategy. What do you do to master a course? So for example, we know that there are like homeworks, there are like you've done uh, projects that are like, you know, textbooks. How do you go about it? There's a whole lot to learn, like, you know? So mm -hmm. how do you make your choices in such a way that you grasp the content very well, you master the course, but in, in an optimized manner, which means in a short time? How, what is, what is your strategy? Okay, uh, to grasp a, uh, concepts of a course in a short time, uh, is actually very hard. Therefore, you have to be uh, working consistently uh, with, within short periods. Mm -hmm. So what I usually do, even in those semesters that I take nine to 10 uh, courses, by the way, you will not be taking that many courses, but since I was a transfer student, in order to complete in four years, I had to take more than uh, six to seven courses a semester. Per semester, that and, is a lot. Yeah. Uh, and this actually applies to uh, two uh, double major students as well. They will be doing exactly the same. They will be taking night time courses. And mm -hmm. the key to success is that uh, you have to study a little bit of uh, what you have seen that day, what you worked on that day after the class. Uh, that, that's what I did. And pre-classes, you have to know what you are going to be learning in that class that day before you go to the class. A university is, is not there to teach you the course. The university is there to teach you how to learn the course. So uh, you have to go to the course prepared. You have to know what you are going to be studying that day and then take the course from your teacher and repeat it afterwards after the course uh, in that day. For example, if I have three courses that day, I will be studying for those three courses the day uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. And after the courses, I will be repeating what I've learned at the evening. And yeah, uh, I, I took, uh, to summarize, and they, not to summarize, to, uh, during the midterm times and the final times, uh, I usually uh, go through uh, all the materials of the courses, uh, previous exams, quizzes, etc. the slides, and study them very fastly, very fast. Because uh, I already know the concepts. Uh, I just have to do more examples, and I use those examples to improve my further understanding of the course. So that's Wonderful. mostly it. Wonderful. So 
basically, uh, there is a short echo here. Okay, it's fine. So basically, what we're saying is um, you study before the course, and the day uh, you take the course, you create your uh, personal notes. So this is what I call, you know, I always encourage students to personalize and individualize the content of the course, because the teacher is there just to clarify for you the concepts, okay, to explain, to, uh, you know, introduce a, a new topic, give examples, but then I always tell the students, whether you have a good teacher or, you know, like uh, a bad teacher, whatever, te you know, whomever you have, you take your, your, your knowledge from, the real work happens uh, when you take the material and you work through it. So basically, you are self-teaching. The teacher, the best of the best, and the worst of the worst, they will only give you, you know, 10 to 20, 30 percent and maximum okay the 70 percent is up to you right you need to invest your effort into going through the material into you know coding up maybe uh you know some examples if you're taking these courses and i'm um, also looking for other material they're like you know the internet is flooding with uh, a lot of courses so you can try to find uh complementary information to expand your knowledge in the field uh in that you know particular course so Definitely, uh, and this never stops. And this is what I tell students, university doesn't teach you uh, just you know, topics because eventually at some point after you graduate, you're gonna forget most of those things. So however, what stays with you is the logic you have earned, like the logic that you've mastered, the skills that you have learned, right? How to reason, how to solve problems, how to discipline yourself, so these thinking skills, these, uh, you know, uh, thinking skills, I would call them design skills, they will stay with you. And this is what will make you stand out. And people usually think, okay, I'm graduating, I'm going to look for a job. Now everything is easy because, okay, so I know all this stuff. Well, that's not true. Every time you, you start a new job or you pursue a master program or a PhD, whatever you set your mind to, you always need to learn from scratch. Many things, many concepts. So your ability to adapt fast, your ability to learn fast, your working strategies, your thinking skills, this is these are the most invaluable assets of a student and of a I would say human being in general. So uh, definitely great. So I think we, we will almost about to wrap this interview. Um, so I would like to ask you about uh, two things. You mentioned you have you had so you have developed so many uh, you know fantastic projects you know related to artificial intelligence. But before we go into the projects, tell me about your favorite courses or the courses that inspired you here that made you want to specify in artificial intelligence into uh you know develop projects related to ai what what are the most the courses that you liked most that made you love the area uh, at itu and also um why artificial intelligence right so you know these two things courses and ai okay um, I want to start with why AI first, so I can explain the courses uh, easier. Right order. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so why AI? Because uh, we are in a change of uh, we are in a time of change. Uh, mm -hmm. Computers are changing, and um, right now we are teaching computers to teach themselves. So uh, uh, I have seen this trend that uh, that will be going further and i have seen that uh, people are going to be are not going to be as useful as they used to be computers are are going to be the future of our technology and ai is the very first uh, trend or artificial intelligence is the very first concept that comes to mind in this uh, changing world I wanted to become a part of this. And um, in my high school years, uh, I used to do robotics and I used to work with uh, sensory data a lot. So uh, because of that, uh, I had a little bit of uh, knowledge about how to uh, process data using computers. And AI is basically 
just that it's, it's a very very basic simplification uh, i know i'm sorry if i have <laughs> uh, said anything wrong it's a very basic simplification mm -hmm. so uh, in order to yeah in, in order to do these things in order to process data with computers uh, you have to know mathematics and linear algebra at its best uh, you know um, so i'm gonna give a heart uh, to linear algebra yeah <laughs> uh, to parallelize uh, to distribute most of the work uh, you have to know very you have to have a very great understanding of the uh, mathematical concepts behind the computers, mostly linear algebra and calculus. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So um, these courses in ITU uh, are very actually, um, how can I say, they open, they open your mind, they envision you to uh, continue within these subjects. For example, mm -hmm. I have taken uh, numerical methods and linear algebra from uh, Yusuf teacher, Yusuf Yaslan from ITU, and his uh, courses are great they're outstanding he shows you uh, after the class or uh, after the not class after the subject that you have to learn in the class uh, he shows you where they are employed uh, in what algorithms uh, they are being used um, their use cases in the computer science and this actually uh, shows you why the course you're taking is very very important so mostly uh, linear algebra and uh, numerical methods courses. And calculus, amazing. So why? See, now we're going circling back to why this course is important. Because, you know, you study, when you study maths, you don't understand it's too abstract, right? You say, why I'm studying yes. this? What's the point, right? But when the teacher shows you, here are the wide applications of these theories of this calculus, right? It's, it's amazing. It's everywhere. And they show you tangible examples and that that inspires you and that gives you your why why am i studying this amazing thank you batuhan for sharing it's amazing okay now tell me about your projects so i have showed you know like displayed a, a lot of projects i think more mm -hmm. than uh, about seven or eight projects you know related to ai that you've got the time to develop throughout these three years, how did you get the time to do those? When did you do those actually? When did you develop them? Tell, tell us more about your projects, how much time you dedicated to your projects, the importance of the projects in, uh, you know, for you in mastering your knowledge. How important do you think a project-oriented education is in general? So maybe hmm. we can start with that and you can talk a little bit about your personal projects. Well, um... A project, a project oriented education is for me is very important because uh, it shows me it uh, it gives me the experience to see what I'm working on uh, in the industry or in the field. Um, it's it allows me to see my work in action. That's what I can say. Uh, it takes it takes from theory to real life applications and. That's what actually engineering is, is to solve real life, action, uh, real life problems with the knowledge uh, gained. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, using, I mean, um, project oriented education is very important. And ITU does a very good job at that as well. Most of the homeworks and most of the coursework projects are aimed at the real life applications of the uh, things that, are, that you are using in algorithms, for example, they make you choose the subject and then write the algorithm of it. And for example, in some teachers learning from data courses, you actually get to see uh, where the algorithm or the optimization or whatever you are working on in real life with real data. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, very, it's a very key concept in learning. Uh, for me personally. Okay, so tell us about the coolest project. The coolest project. Mm -hmm. I know that you have so many cool projects, but tell us about the coolest project that you really you're so proud of that or you like you liked most, I would say. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk about the very latest project that mm -hmm. I worked on. Uh, the barcode scanning technology as uh, 
Islam teacher has shown. It was my graduation project. It took uh, about nine to 10 months as a graduation project, but I had, uh, yeah, uh -huh. I had a background uh, before that, uh, which concludes the overall research time in around uh, 12 to 14 months. So uh, the reason I'm proud of it is that it's actually an end product right now. Uh, it's, it has state-of-the-art accuracy and uh, speed. Uh, it allows you to do basically, uh, it combines all the features of, uh, all the features of many barcode scanners into one. It is very fast and accurate at the same time. Have, Doing those things is uh, very hard in computer vision. And yeah, uh, mostly that. Yeah, so tell us about the algorithm. So what are the components of the algorithm of your, your, bar, your barcode uh, detection? Hmm. OK, so, so which, uh, algorithm, which, which methodologies you have used? So in AI, we have a wide spectrum. So did you use simple computer vision or did you use, for example, deep learning? What did you use? Mm -hmm. Uh, we use deep learning and deep mm -hmm. learning at its finest. Uh, all of those projects that uh, Islam teacher has shown actually uh, led me to uh, this product because mm -hmm. uh, having a deep learning model or an ML model in the production uh, has very compo uh, is a lot of components in it. For mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. model, model minimization and quantization. Our uh, model has that. You have to minimize uh, and you have to make use of, extract the useful parts of the model to minimize and uh, speed, up the, speed up the process. Or uh, in, to be used in mo uh, mobile and edge devices, uh, by optimizing your model, you actually uh, give it the ability to work on very small and uh, uh, very, limited hardware mm -hmm. and to do this life cycle uh, from research you make up a deep learning model and to uh, to put that in a mobile device you cannot just uh, simply drag and drop i would say you use uh, many Absolutely. intermediary Absolutely. intermediary steps to uh, put that model into that device uh, things like this to come to the uh, what is it called uh, the deep learning part of uh, our model is to uh, we used segmentation. Mm -hmm. uh, segmentation mm -hmm. is a method that we uh, that is how can I say uh, it must masks out the area that a barcode is found in a picture, and this effectively uh, gives us the best performance or the fastest and the most accurate uh, way to detect the location of a barcode. Mm -hmm. That is the core concept, the core deep the learning core concept. concept. Yeah, uh, of our scanner. Excellent. And oh. after that, <laughs> we use normal computer vision techniques to Thank enhance you. barcodes and decode the barcode because the decoding part is uh, just simple IEEE rules that you take and, you know, decoding is, the, is a part of this work. The detection, the localization of the um, barcode is a hard, hard problem to solve in this task. So basically this project, this cool project is a product of uh, a mixture, is a product of a mixture of, of, of courses at, at ITU, right? You yes. Know, learning, machine learning, probably also, you know, like computer vision definitely and we don't forget the source, linear algebra and calculus. Okay, cool. Now, um, so the, my two last questions for you, the, the, uh, before we wrap up this great interview, the, what are your dreams? So what is, do you have like, you know, a big dream? Do you have like, I know like dreams, they change sometimes, but maybe right now, Batuhan in 2021, mm -hmm. uh, today, September 3rd, tell us about your dream or something you aspire to achieve in your life. Uh, in your career, uh, yeah, so go ahead. Okay, so uh, currently my biggest 
dream uh, is to make use of this AI and uh, produce it and make it available to humanity to achieve mm-hmm. that. Uh, I will. I am studying uh, in. Uh, machine learning in production and applications of AI in the industry. Mm-hmm. And this is this is my step forward forward to uh, becoming an entrepreneur and having a, a, a company or, a, a or an industry startup. leading solution, yeah, a startup uh, to make it available to everyone, make the make whatever the research can offer, make the best that, that the research can offer available to everyone. That's actually my dream and I would like to do it uh, internationally. That's why I chose the best of the best, the EPFL. Oh, your dream is a smile. Studies. I feel like a big smile on my face. This is something so, um, you know, uh, awesome. And like, you know, I know it's like a gigantic thing to take on because, um, Actually, this year, um, uh, you know, like um, I we're co-organizing what we call the fair workshop, and uh, you know, which is like you know, workshop a Mikai workshop on artificial intelligence for healthcare, and we called it fair because we want to have affordable AI everywhere, and this is actually an emerging field. There isn't a lot that has been done there so there is a whole lot to do uh batuhan and i'm happy that you are also taking this step so ai is useful everywhere so in ag- agriculture education healthcare, uh social dynamics um so everything you know so basically making it fair world worldwide i think it's it's, it's a big dream and like you know um i'm gonna join you so <laughs> <laughs> wonderful <laughs> So uh, now uh, the last thing I would ask you is like, what is your advice to freshman students, students who are starting their first year at ITU uh, this uh, October uh, 2021? Uh, I I think you have shared a lot already. I think if they watch, they get to watch this video. There is a whole lot that they can learn, you know, like they can contemplate over, but maybe like a short advice or a piece of advice that you can share with them just when they get started, what would you tell them so that they become successful as you are? All right. Uh, yeah. I know Islam teacher and I have mentioned this a lot, but uh, please, guys, I have met with uh, many of the high uh, high school uh, or uh, yeah, high school graduate students, mm-hmm. and I see that many of them choose ITU or the department that they're in because of their uh, points or because of their rankings, please don't. Please have an aim. Mm-hmm. Uh, please try to get a better understanding of what you want to become because when you have aim, you're going to become that no matter what, e- either in ITU or not, uh, either with that person or with this person. It doesn't matter. Uh, set your aims and uh, look whatever you can do to achieve them on your own. Internet is your friend. Books are also your friend. And teachers. Uh, yeah, teachers. Teachers <laughs> are your. You're, you're gonna be getting a, what's it, what is it called? A teacher to you know, uh, Danishman teacher. Donishman, yeah, a support, yeah, yeah. support. Yeah, a teacher that you can uh, go and uh, share your advisory, thoughts. Advisory, advisor, like a- an advisor, advisor, advisor. advisor. Yes. yeah, a- an advisory teacher. Uh, go and talk to them. All of our staff is very helpful. They will, I'm pretty sure, uh, they will do whatever they can to help you out uh, in reaching your aims. Go talk to them. I'm pretty sure uh, they will show you. Uh, very great examples or uh, whatever you are after, uh, th- they will be helpful to you. And uh, for those of you who are coming to ITU and for those uh, for starting their first years in, in the university, you are going to be taking a lot of um, pool courses. What is it called? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, the courses that you share, uh, that you 
take at the same time with uh, other departments. Those courses have 200 to 300 capacities, such mm -hmm. as uh, uh, physics or mathematics, you know, the, the very basics. Uh, mm -hmm. Learn those courses uh, very well and uh, please try to get very good grades in those because going back to those is very hard. Uh, you will not get to retake them in your third or fourth year uh, mm -hmm. education. That's why I uh, keep, uh, have a good basic, uh, have a good base, uh, build up well, and then everything is going to come your way. Wonderful. Never so wonderful. I, I just remembered one, one last question. So this is for discipline, for learning. What about fun? What, 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 do you, what do you do for, for fun. fun or what can they do for fun? Well, uh, for fun, ITU and many other uh, universities offer uh, great student uh, groups, uh, mm -hmm. student clubs. Uh, whatever interests you from hiking to, I don't know, uh, archery, you can go and talk with the clubs and join them. Uh, in your first year, you are going to get to know a lot of new people, go out with them, have fun with them. And uh, as you all know, it's not always studies and it's not always, you know, work, work, work. You have to have fun to uh, focus on your work better. Okay, cool. Awesome. Definitely. You, you got to have fun, guys. I do have fun too. I, you, everyone yeah. needs a me time, you know, because the brain needs to rest to just you know switch off a little bit and then like actually it is like processing um how do i say all the information that you have grasped the courses throughout the whole week you need some time where you just chill and relax and i think um nature is the best thing like if you connect with nature or also you can do any other you know nature sports reading uh walking moving it's important singing, dancing, whatever yeah. you guys are up for. Uh, these are all great activities that will keep you um, help. They will keep your mental health good, uh, your, your, your physical health good. Uh, I love also to meditate. So there are lots of things that uh, could be done. Wonderful. Now, oh, I agree high. with you. Yeah. Uh, some okay. teacher. yeah. I also love nature. And uh, for me, my extracurricular activities usually involve some kind of sea. Uh, uh -huh. I'm a sailor. I oh, like yeah. to sail. Yeah, as you have seen in the first photo. The, that was the first photo, yeah. That was yeah. okay, wonderful. So how do you, when do you usually go, you know, when do you sail? Is it like, you know, how, how often do you do that? Well, um, I try to do it uh, whenever I have free time and, and when the wind is okay. Uh, yeah. The wind is usually yeah. okay around um, climate changes, you know, from uh, August to September or uh, April to May. Those are the very good uh, times in Istanbul to go out sailing. The wind is fine. Wonderful. So what about, what, what else do you do? So sailing, what are the things? Anything um, else? Yeah, I, I like uh, walking, you know. Uh, walking. I like running and walking, cycling. Uh, mostly those and when I have time I usually do water sports like uh, surfing you know uh, windsurf or you know wakeboard with uh, th those kind of things I, I really like to go out into nature wonderful and become remember, one with the sea <laughs> you reminded me of the secret of the water like um uh, my supervisor, my postdoc supervisor, uh, he uh, loves swimming. He, he swims every day for an hour after work. I think it's at seven to eight. And uh, he uh, used to tell us that he got the best research ideas when he was just underwater. So I was like, okay, so amazing. All right. So, um, okay. So last thing, uh, do you have anything else? that you would like to share with the viewers? Anything that you want to say at all? Maybe I have missed something that you wanted to talk about. Anything else, Batuhan? Uh, well, not really. Uh, I have said many things and people have, people must have some time to work them through now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
get in get in contact with your teachers guys uh, they will they will help you out a lot especially throughout your undergraduate career uh, if you're thinking uh, to continue your uh, academic career uh, try to keep your you know uh, grades high but don't forget to have fun don't forget to have fun also thank you so much for joining us today it's been a great pleasure to have you uh congratulations again for your uh for your first rank congratulations for getting admitted to epfl i wish you the very best in your future and hopefully uh maybe uh i'll interview you after a few years and we will get to see what you what you got there so what awesome th things you have achieved i wish you the very best batuhan thank you again for your time and take care thanks well thank you for having me some teacher uh, i would like all and all of, all of our viewers to have their uh, very best thank you thank you bye-bye take care you you too